A hearty welcome to all. Thank you for choosing my channel to watch. I extend a warm hug. Now let's be busy in art. I'm Vicki, Retro Queen Bee Art, and this is the fourth week of Seat Gather on Create. I decided to do a background on a gel plate. And this technique of transfer, I was watching the Robin McClendon a photo transfer gel plate. And here I'm taking the window, blurry window off with a gel medium. Then I want to make circles, so I cut a mixed media paper that I had used also for the window transfer on the gel plate. And I use, just draw the circles using a stencil that I had. I make, you know, bigger ones, mid-sized ones, little ones. And I do want the circles touching because as I do my gouch paint here, I want, you know, the color to run into the other circles. Now I chose green because this is one of the prompt requirements. So I have a blurry window and now I add green. Oh, and I also do a repetitive, um, repetitive objects with the circles. So gouch paint is like a watercolor paint, except it has more color and it's brighter when it dries. That, where watercolor paint um, is very pretty, but it does dry lighter and it's more of a lighter color. Although I can make it be bright because I love colors. Now, I got the circle idea from Noit, N-O-I-T Art. So I'm giving her a shout out uh, for her circle art journal page. Although I put my own twist on it. I add yellow because yellow and green are complementary colors on the color wheel. So they look good to the eye. And you can see periodically in the video how the paint runs into each other and makes just a cool effect around the circle. Then I decide to add red, which is okay, but it is uh, not a complementary color, but it is a contrast color which looks good with green. So I pop some red everywhere, but kind of concentrate it more in the middle of the circles. This is a really pretty red too, in this Scouch paint set. And red you can't really bake. Yeah, you can't make red. You have to have a good red color that you like to paint with. I love to paint. I think you all probably know that by now. It's so relaxing. And when you do this project, you don't need to be exact in the lines because I'm going to do a Posca, black Posca pin lining around the circles 
and the circles will just pop. And you won't even be able to tell that you went out of a line. So you can see some bleeding happening there. Bleeding is when the paint mixes with other paint. And then it kind of runs into each other, making a different kind of look. Which can be very pretty. I did make um, a previous circles and painted them and, and did the cutout. It was bigger than this particular one, but I'm gonna use it in my extra large journal. Be kind of cool for a belly band. That's what I was thinking. We're getting towards the end. And I think I'm done. It has to dry before you put the black circles around the circle, the black ink around the circles. Oops, I used the lighter ink at first, but I didn't like the look. So I got out my Posca pen and it created a darker circle. Now here I'm making the vine. I'm gonna put a vine in the middle with leaves. And when I make my vine, I do three up and then I do three down. And then I will do three up. That's why I change it. And my leaves, I intentionally do not make them all the same because leaves are not the same on vines. And so I'm taking the structure of the leaf and changing it somewhat. And I'm also not sequencing the leaves in a one pattern. Now in the end, I start the little tip and I have room to do a figure eight leaf. And there we go. Then I'm darkening the vein of the leaf with Bosca. Now, the leaf coloring is a little different uh, than what Noit used, but I used acrylic paint because the wash, the gouge paint, excuse me, will activate with water. And I wanted it all covered in acrylic paint. It took a couple coats. And then I took my gouge white paint and painted over the acrylic, which even made the leaves look whiter. Here you see me slow motion. <laughs> Thank you. 
And then I'm all done and I take out my Posca pen and I go around all the leaves. Making little jaggedy lines. Then here I begin um, to create a, a vein in the leaf. And I do create the veins in different patterns to give depth to the leaf. So there I went up. I just looked at the leaf and I decided, well, where should this vein go? And I didn't want a straight vein. I wanted kind of a curly vein, curvy vein, a upward vein, a downward vein. So as you can see, I'm making the veins different on each leaf. Then I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, hmm, I want to put some design on the leaves. So I take out my green Posca and my yellow Posca and I begin to fill in half of the leaf. So this side, I did the upper half of the leaf. And I wanted the dots just to be all random, not in a particular pattern. I started out with a pattern of dots, but then I didn't like the look. So I did fix them so they looked more random. And then this side, I did the bottom of the leaf. So you can see the leaf there that is missing, oops, my hand covered it, but the vein is missing all the way to the tip of the leaf. Well, when I was using my yellow Posca on that leaf right there, the big yellow dot of color came out from the Posca and I go, oh no, how am I going to fix that one? So I had to blot up the yellow ink with my brush as much as I could. And there you see me fixing the curve to the leaf. I painted, we painted it with uh, gouch white paint and I fixed it. So if that does happen to you, you can fix it. And then I decided to put uh, black speckles onto the painting and you know when you do this you just do as much as your eye would like then I cut it out all around and then here you see me cutting out I'm going to cut out all the white in between the circles and the leaves, which is a little tedious. I have to use a cutting knife. And after I cut those out and took them out, I did use my black Posca around the center of the hole just to keep it black uh, outlining. And on the edging of the circles, I did a brown ink pad around it and then I did a, brown, a black ink pad around that. So I used two colors of ink, but I, you know, looking at you can't see too much, but on the edging is where you will see it mostly. And here I am um, all done. And I'm really pleased with the outcome. I'm so excited I got those windows done with the gel plate. Now, 
right here, that little brown edging is from gel plate tries that failed, <laughs> and so I did use that. And then a mixed media paper. So I've got the mixed media paper with the gel print and edging around the gel print. And then I just uh, put on top of it with some ink, not ink, with um, my glue gun all around the edging to stick it. My husband insisted that I frame it. So it's gonna be a part of our home. And here's the frame part. Thank you. And please like and comment and share. And I hope to see you then on the next video. Bye-bye.